right now. It's been a requirement in Texas schools for years, but right now it carries a renewed sense of urgency. Why an area school district says the Stop the Bleed program is more important than ever. Wemby mania in full swing. The San Antonio Spurs have the first pick in the upcoming NBA draft. A huge moment in franchise and city history. So could it be that all this is healthy? Mental health experts weigh in about city psyche and how last night's big win is impacting morale in the Alamo City. And that's a good thing. But first. So this was a massive fire at a restaurant that you could see miles away. Just look at that smoke. People who live and work near that restaurant say that this is connected to the city's homeless problem. Now you've probably noticed it, but now the city has data to back you up. Yes, there are in fact more unsheltered people in our area. And people who live next to abandoned properties that unsheltered people use to camp out say it's a real problem. The night team's Patty Santos tells us how the city may be planning to deal with the issue. Plume of smoke that could be seen for miles. The result of a problem Hunter Bass says he's been worried about for some time. Once the building was opened up to the to the transient population, that's when it really started to uh, become a lot more prevalent, more problematic for us. Bass says the issues with his former Japanese restaurant on Wurzbach Road started about two years ago. Over the course of several calls to the city, he says he's reported someone using an extension cord to steal electricity and says he even found a wireless router plugged in, along with seeing about a dozen people in and out of that building. People were very uncomfortable with the traffic that was going through that area. Over the last two years, police service call records show there's been nearly 60 calls to that location for everything from fights to homeless encampments and burglary alarms. We know that we've got a phenomenon all over the city of abandoned buildings being used as encampments or being used by people um, who are not homeless. Councilman Manny Pelias, who represents the district where the fire happened, says the issue of abandoned properties is a public safety concern all over the city. Boarding up these properties doesn't work. Just this morning, this fire on Poplar near Flores Street at another vacant property. Neighbors told KSET they have seen and reported vagrants coming in and out of that building. There's concern the problem could get worse. Bear County's latest point in time survey found a 5% increase in people experiencing homelessness. Of the more than 3,000 people surveyed in Bear County, nearly 900 said they were unsheltered. We've been trying to handle this in the most delicate and humane way, but I mean, at the end of the day, we can't have people lighting fires inside buildings. That's just unacceptable. And Belias tells us we're going to start hearing city council start brainstorming on ideas on how to handle this problem. It could be penalties or fees for the owners that let these buildings go or maybe even incentives. In the meantime, if you have an abandoned property next door to you or to your business that's causing some problems, he says, call your city council representative or code compliance. Steve Stefania. Thank you, Patty. Tonight, a 40 year old man facing a felony charge for sexually assaulting a teenage girl. This is 40 year old Goberto Garza III. Police say he answered a sexually explicit ad posted on social media. The alleged victim says she was taken to an apartment complex to meet Garza, where she was then assaulted. Arrest records also say Garza paid the alleged victim. He was arrested yesterday, has a bond set at $150,000. A murder trial that began just yesterday is already about to wrap up. Bobby Solis is accused in a deadly shooting that happened back in 2020. The girlfriend and family of the victim, John Eric Garcia, found him in the parking lot of a West Side apartment complex. Garcia and the suspect apparently had an ongoing feud. Now today the jury saw the supposed murder weapon. Tomorrow both sides are expected to rest and jury deliberations to begin. And happening right now, Frost Bank has confirmed it is having issues with its debit card system. We reached out to the bank within the last half hour. We're told its teams are aware and working to resolve the issue. In the meantime, its customer care line also expecting and experiencing very long wait times. All right, you saw that. Yeah, San Antonio actually woke up all smiles today because of one man named Victor Wembenyama. The Spurs are expected to select him with the number one pick in the upcoming NBA draft. Yeah, it gave the entire city something to be happy about. And the guy's not even officially on the team yet.
It's true. The 19 Sean Paul Barajas reports these types of moments are needed for our mental health with all the negativity we hear about. John Paul joins us now. So, all right, John Paul, keep the good times rolling. What can you tell us? It's a good day to have a good day. I'm hanging out with my buddy Victor here. I even have him on my shirt and his expected new uniform, the silver and black. And last night was a perfect example of even through the bad days, life is still good and there's definitely plenty to cheer about. Number one pick in the 2023 NBA draft goes to the San Antonio Spurs. One moment, one pick, and one name. Now, Victor Wenbanyama. Victor Wenbanyama. Victor Wenbanyama. Victor, you found out. Victor Wenbanyama has given the Alamo City a jolt of life and a euphoric feeling. This is a once in a lifetime thing. Uh, you know, last time we got the first pick was Tim Duncan. Uh, this is going to change our franchise. It, it makes the suffering of last year worth it all. Nothing is guaranteed, but the Spurs have the number one pick in the draft. And just the thought of the Spurs being crowned champs for a sixth time is enough to get any fan excited. In times of trouble, having something to be happy about goes a long way. I've had a pretty bad week myself, but I mean, it's pretty great because, I mean, it makes you forget about all the negativity. And, you know, we got that one giant seven foot five ray of sunshine with about eight wide wingspan coming in through the heavens. Whether you're just having a bad day or if the recent headlines about tragedies are bringing you down, any positive news is a game changer, according to psychiatrist Harry Croft. People can be all down in the dumps and something good happens in sports. And, and for that one brief shining moment, it's all exciting. So yeah, sport can mean a lot. Welcome to San Antonio. You gotta love the power of sports. As mentioned, all it takes is one moment to make a difference. But let's be honest, we're all hoping for a lot more than just one moment when this guy gets here to the Alamo City. Steve, Stephanie. I love that quote from the guy, John Paul. Thank you very much. I love the quote from the guy. It's a seven foot four inch ray of sunshine. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. By the way, have you ever wondered why Spurs fans go honking downtown to celebrate? How did it start? Well, you can read all about the ritual's origins right now on KSAT.com. The state needs more people to become emergency medical techs. So as an incentive, Governor Greg Abbott announcing the state's health services department awarding $9 million in scholarships to people who study to become EMTs or paramedics. The money usually goes to people from lower income families and those who live in rural areas where there aren't as many EMT workers. This isn't a new problem either. Months ago, we told you there are EMT shortages in South Texas and really across the country. Experts say the shortage even got worse during COVID. Saving lives in just a matter of minutes. That is the focus behind the Stop the Bleed training. And Texas law requires school districts to have trained staff. But as the night team's Lee Waldman explains, shootings like the one at Robb Elementary drive home the need for that training. Bleeding emergencies can cause death within five minutes. It's not a new concept. Being able to stop bleeding during an emergency gives someone a better chance of survival. Early intervention is crucial because they're not gonna have the opportunity to be intervened on later. Today, Northeast ISD's Assistant Director of Health Services, Delyn McCartney, led a group of staff and the in-part person of their Stop the Bleed class. Each participant had to take an online course and pass a quiz beforehand. The class offers hands-on experience with life-saving, blood-stopping equipment like tourniquets. There's three basic techniques that are taught in these classes. Um, how to apply pressure to a wound, how to pack a wound to just um, reinforce extra pressure, and how to apply a tourniquet. The course is voluntary for staff. Justin Oxley got his certification this morning. He says he's glad teachers and school staff have tools at their disposal in case of emergency. That's exactly where we as people on our campus can help out when students um, 
sometimes get in trouble and, and have an injury. They're now offering this class to students from seventh grade up. While it's all tied to House Bill 496, which requires districts to teach Stop the Bleed training, in light of the Robb Elementary shooting, the training feels more urgent. Unfortunately, these mass violence situations are shedding a light on why it's so important um, and definitely um, helping people understand, you know, why why it would be a good thing for them to have. Lee Waltman, KSAT 12 News. And Northeast ISD students interested in the Stop the Bleed training have to get permission from their parents first, and then their school nurse goes to train them. The training for a new job without student loans. We're going to tell you about a free program that's get setting some San Antonians on a new career path and how you could join the next class. Think about it, a chance at a new career in just six weeks. It's about to become reality for students in the Generator Skills Accelerator Program. San Antonio's first class graduates tomorrow, but as the 19 of John Paul Barajas explains, their success is really paving the way for the next group of potential graduates. I'm actually going through the process of, put, of filling out so many applications now that I'm really not sure what to accept if it comes in. Creating opportunities. It's one of the main goals of the Generator Skills Accelerator Program. Congratulations, everyone. This week, the members of its first San Antonio cohort will graduate with new skills to help them advance their careers. My career coach, Mary, and all the Microsoft team, they were always there, always checking up on all of us. Both Cynthia Hernandez and Dwight Chapman are soon to be graduates of the six-week program. They'll finish with skills in project management, along with help in resume building and job placement assistance. That's where our work just begins. We're going to bring in our national network of employers. We have about 420 employers that we work with nationally, which includes local employers. The program vice president, Cole Shear, tells us nearly 350 people applied for their first partnership with Alamo Colleges and the city of San Antonio. They Accepted about 60, all set to graduate tomorrow, just days before their second cohort kicks off. A program like this that doesn't cost anything to get involved in other than your time is a great investment. John Paul Barajas. If I can do it, anyone else can do it, no matter how old you are. KSA 12 News. Generator's second cohort will start classes next week. They expect to accept 60 to 75 people for the free program this time. Here's the thing though, they uh, you have to apply by midnight this Friday, but don't worry, we have a link to the application for you on our website, ksat.com. Exciting program. Yeah. All right, I wanna give you a quick update. The debit card issues at Frost Bank appear to be resolved. We first told you about it earlier in our newscast. The bank tweeted out an update saying customers should be able to use their debit cards now. Keep in mind, Frost says its customer service line is still very busy. I'm sure they're answering a lot of calls tonight. All right, and now we're going to take a live look outside. This is a live look at I-10 right now, 77 degrees. Just a beautiful day that we had today. And if you like what we had today, okay, you'll have a few more days of that, right? Yeah, we do have a bit of a break from the rain until the storm chances return, and they are right around the corner. But if you like today, you like the next couple of days. Quiet tomorrow, quiet, quiet through Friday. During the day, we're just fine. It's Friday night that a cold front arrives, and with that cold front, we can't rule out some widely separated thunderstorms to develop, maybe even some severe storms. So let's get right to it. Taking a look at our storm and rain chances here. 0%, the big old goose egg, tomorrow, tomorrow night. And I would even say... Friday for the most part. It's Friday night when that cold front's going to drop in, and that gives us a 30% chance. So we're not expecting anything very widespread. It's not going to affect everybody. Actually, it'll affect fewer than half of South and Central Texas. But the key is anything that develops, as is quite common this time of year, could become strong to severe Friday night. And then we could have some isolated pop-up showers and storms Saturday in just a few as we get into Sunday. So yes, storm chances do return. We're just not expecting the same coverage as we've seen in recent history. Now, speaking of coverage, I love looking at this. I know you like good news along with me. Okay, we have our aquifer zones, the recharge zone here in the middle, the most important, and then also the contributing zone here in red. We highlighted those areas, seven day rainfall within the contributing zone and the recharge zone. We've got areas of four to five inches over the past seven days. So actually compared to, or since March 1st, the aquifer is up 10 and a half feet since March 1st. 
That's some good news right there. And remember the new drought monitor comes out tomorrow and I'm excited to show that with you and I've got high hopes for some big time improvements. Now this is something interesting with all the rain. You may think Guadalupe River, you can get out, you can float on the river, but the stream flow is nowhere near average. For example, Spring Branch stream flow, 49 cubic feet per second. The average is 243 cubic feet per second. You get to New Braunfels, 153. The average is 405. So stream flow is still on the low end, but improving. That's the key. We're seeing the improvements and more storm chances in the days ahead. Let's talk about the pattern here. Pretty quiet across the state. A few just run of the mill garden variety showers, West Texas and the Panhandle earlier today, and even some in the Panhandle right now. That's good. They need the rain up there as well. Big upper level low, this disturbance with that counterclockwise circulation around it over the Baja Peninsula. That's a big disturbance in the atmosphere. It's thrown some energy our way, but it's also combining with a big blue H over Mexico. We're used to the big blue H parks itself overhead for most of the summer, but this is centered over Mexico and due to the respective flows around these systems, it's just going to funnel some Pacific moisture and Pacific energy our way, not a continuous flow of energy giving us as active of a pattern as we've seen recently, but enough to help kickstart some showers and storms starting Friday night. Not only that, it's going to combine with the cold front I mentioned earlier Friday during the day. A-OK, -okay. outdoor practice, outdoor games, outdoor whatever, you're going to be fine, even through the evening hours, through sunset. It's after sunset we need to start looking off to the north, Edwards Plateau, northern hill country, when we could see some storms developing along a cold front. It's a weak cold front, but it's going to have an impact on our weather. And then those storms, as they develop along the cold front, not everywhere along the front, but in some random spots, they'll be moving from the north to the south after sunset. Then some of them may make it to San Antonio after dark Friday night and then even on Saturday again, those isolated chances. All right, let's talk temperatures. 63 this morning, 83 this afternoon. Tomorrow we start the day at 67, 83 by noon, then right near 90 for the high, 89 the high temperature, wall to wall sunshine, just a beautiful day. Friday is going to be very similar, but notice it's going to be warmer south and west of town. 92 Del Rio, 94 Carrizo Springs, and Catula, 94 degrees, the high temperature. Von Army, 90, Seguin, 88, New Braunfels, 89 tomorrow. Now look at the impact, though, that cool front has on our temperatures. We're still 91 on Friday, but behind that cool front, with the help of additional clouds, 81 on Saturday and down to 77 for the high temperature on Sunday. And you know, whenever we get into these somewhat active or rainy patterns, we often have cooler springs, and that's what we're seeing right now, these cooler than average temperatures. Okay, thank you. All right, you know, there are acclaimed actors, Al Pacino, <laughs> Meryl Streep. Add to that list, Brian Wright. Yeah, can you imagine being <laughs> the winning team of the lottery? You're sitting in a room with the rest of the guys an hour before it's even televised, and you really can't celebrate all that much because you want to play it cool and respect the others. So, yeah, Brian Wright, indeed, a very great actor spree. Plus, Becky Hammond defends herself and the Aces. Coming up. What was it like in that in that room for the hour you were in there after you knew you won? <laughs> it's a uh, it's an incredible feeling. Um, again, you're excited. You want to show your emotion. It's an incredible moment for the fans, but also being respectful of everyone in the room. I'll get my screams in a little bit more when I leave. Spurs GM Brian Wright had to remain cool and calm after the Spurs won the NBA draft lottery and big board sports. From top to bottom, the Spurs are very excited they won the NBA draft lottery last night in Chicago. Spurs managing partner Peter J. Holt slammed his hands on the table and roared in excitement. But an hour earlier, that wasn't the case when Brian Wright learned the Spurs had won the top pick and the rights to Victor Wimbanyama. The actual lottery takes place earlier behind closed doors in an electronics-free room where 14 other team reps sit behind three rows of tables while ping-pong balls are drawn to determine the top four picks. 
Well, you're in the back with no phones and no way to communicate, so that already adds to the level of anxiety. But you know, just the moments leading into it, and you know, the numbers start to come up, and you're searching through the pages to see if you have it, um, and then you realize it's you. It's just an incredible amount of excitement. But the anxiety, I haven't eaten all day, so if I pass out, excuse me, <laughs> I'll be back after I get a quick bite. But uh, it's just an incredible day, as Peter said, for the franchise, for the fans, uh, for the entire organization, and, and we're incredibly excited about the future. How about this? Wimby cleaned up at the LNB Pro Basketball Awards today. League in France winning league MVP, scoring champ, defensive player of the year, block shots champ, best young player, and named to a top five players team. I mean, no wonder NBA teams covet this guy. Last night, the Denver Nuggets beat the Los Angeles Lakers in game one of the Western Conference Finals, 132-126. Denver took the lead for good at 4-2 to and led by as many as 21 points in the third quarter. Denver big man Nikola Jokic recorded his sixth triple-double of the these playoffs with 34 points, 21 rebounds, and 14 assists, and he had a buzzer beater to end the third quarter. And as you mentioned, Harrison, his aggression, him driving the ball, dunking the ball in traffic, um, and, and we always talk about an aggressive Nikola Jokic is a very effective Nikola Jokic, so, uh, you know, a hell of a job by him. He's a two-time MVP. Uh, he very skilled. Um, you know, obviously, that's his number show. Uh, made some tough shots. You know, we just try to make it tough for him. Davis had 40 points and 10 boards in the loss. Game two is tomorrow night in Denver. Eastern Conference Finals tipped off tonight, and the Heat won at the Celtics, 123 to 116. Las Vegas Aces head coach Becky Hammond was suspended two games without pay, and the team is losing their 2025 first-round draft pick after an investigation found the franchise violated league rules regarding impermissible player benefits and workplace policies. Former Vegas player Derricka Hamby alleges she was bullied for being pregnant, and that's why the Aces traded her to Los Angeles. And it never was why uh, we made the decision to move Hamby. We made the decision to move Hamby because we could get three bodies in for her one contract. And we wanted to get three more people in. Um, I think it's very evident who we signed on, on why we made the move. Um, but it, it was never an issue. And it was, it was never the reason she was traded. Um, it just wasn't. It came down to math and business. That's all it was. Nothing personal. Hamby, I mean, like I said, I had a great relationship with, with Hamby the whole, the whole time. The Aces will start their WNBA title defense Saturday, 2 p.m. at Seattle, right here on KSAT 12. Wimbanyama trading cards will be a hot item after the break. We've got a lot of phone calls in already. Um, there's a lot of buzz in the city about Victor. Um, it's going to be huge, and uh, it's already getting hot, yeah. Fans are calling Boomtown Sports Cards and Collectibles looking for Wimbanyana trading cards, and they're not out yet. The Spurs own the first pick in the upcoming NBA draft, so Wimby cards will be a hot item here in San Antonio and for those who collect. The last few years in basketball, we've kind of lacked that huge rookie to chase. I think the one prior to him was Zion Williamson. I think we're going to see that same kind of effect with basketball and the products. The way we saw the Zion effect, it's going to be the Victor effect. It's just going to explode. Wimby's first product release is this Friday, so happy hunting. And how about this? The NAIA number two ranked Our Lady of the Lake softball team beat Hope International University 2-0 in both games today to claim the NAIA opening round San Antonio bracket title. So ticket punch the Saints advance to the NAIA World Series for the first time in program history. Wow. Congratulations. Awesome. That is awesome. O-L-L-U mania and Wimby. Mania. Mania. I like the way he's talking about the Victor effect. Yeah, and yeah. his name is Victor. He's kind of like that. He pro yeah, he probably why he worked it. <laughs> Lots of good things Thanks, happening. Larry. It's all good news. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. So we talked about Friday night getting into Saturday at 30% chance. So isolated to widely separated, separated showers and storms developing out there. And then even into next week, we have a few isolated showers possible from time to time, a 20% chance at that point. And notice those lower temperatures down to 77 for the high on Sunday and into next week. We only level off in the low to mid 80s. Average, by the way, is 87. Let's just enjoy these nice blue skies that we'll have in the next few days. Yeah, absolutely. Good night. Good night.